Hey gang, I was getting ready to change the throttle on the old Widowmaker. You can tell this one's been kind of old. I don't even have uh, a drive in R, R reverse and drive. I wore it off. But nonetheless, I've recently lost my reverse. They both go forward, so finally time to change the throttle. And I thought, while I'm doing this, let me use that new GoPro camera I bought. Hopefully I got this shot lined up right because it's on my head. Anyway, here we go. Um, first of all, you wanna get your screw, I get a flathead screwdriver. What's holding this on is nothing but just friction. So you kind of make sure that you don't get on this I'll show you that in a moment it's a little collar that's underneath inside the um, throttle but anyway you just carefully try to work a little bit of air under there and then you basically it's like a bicycle grip you kind of work her off said the man okay say so it's making progress slow and steady wins the race you'll get it you'll get it See how far it's come so far? Once you get it to a certain point, she'll come off easy because there's not a lot of rubber holding onto the metal. Don't get frustrated, it'll come. Seems like it won't, but there we go. See that? Scratch that up a little bit, but who cares? Nothing holding that on other than its friction. That's step one. Here is the collar I was speaking of inside the throttle assembly. Don't lose this, because what this does, this is a spacer between this rubber and the throttle so that this does not impede this from turning. Does that make sense? Okay. My next step is there's a little set screw under here. A set screw, folks, is a little screw that all it's doing I don't know if you can see this again my camera work right here where my finger is it's an allen screw it just holds this in place i'm going to loosen that and i'll show you that in just a moment okay no one's allowed to laugh at me because somebody took his allen key set out of his toolbox and did not put it back where it was i wonder who that'll be luckily i had this driver bit and a little but you see, there's where the set screw is, if you can see that. Again, my camera work, I'm, I'm working blind here as it's on my forehead. I just loosened that. You see how now it slides and turns and all that? Now the next thing I'm gonna do is of course, I'm gonna pull back some wire out of here. It's probably taped if I knew me inside. I'm gonna peel back very carefully so I can cut this wire, say about here. Now, before I do that, listen to me very carefully. You need to pull the fuse out from under here because some of these wires oftentimes are hot even when the key's off. Now, I happen to know that these wires probably are not, they are not hot with the key off. However, this is good practice. Anytime you do any splicing of any kind um, or any kind of cutting in order to splice, you wanna make sure you pull that fuse out. Okay, otherwise you'll get a big surprise. Test, one, two, one, two. Okay guys, back at it, my camera died on me. Um, I've got my cover off. This is what the fuse looks like, by the way. You can tell I've got half a Diamond Lake on my scooter. Anyway, I pulled the fuse out. You often hear me refer to it as a uh, red match pack. So that's out. I've also stripped back the wires carefully, okay? Now the wires coming from here, of course, had a little bit of heat, had a little bit of this shielding on them, but once I cut them, of course, being a short piece, it just pulled right off. I gave myself enough wire to work on both ends, okay? I took the liberty, I went ahead and did these three already, just in the interest of time, but I will go through the whole process of how I do it. Now you could just crimp these, but I just can't bring myself to do that. So here's how I do, and I'll show you, but of course crimping them would be fine. First of all, I, before I did this, I put two pieces of heat shrink on here. That way if one's not long enough, I can overlap them. You'll see that at the very end. But 
make sure you put your heat shrink on first because if you solder it and then say, uh-oh, I didn't have heat shrink, guess what you'll be doing? Cutting and soldering it again. So now what I'm going to do, again, the fuse is out. I'm going to go ahead and try to make it even on both sides. Oh, I would say about a half inch is what I use. You may want to use a little bit more if you're new to this process or soldering or not that proficient. Now, here is just the Steve method, okay? I'll show you this, but again, I'm just OCD, so bear with me. So I kind of mesh those together in and out like that. I go ahead and get them kind of tight and I'll show you why. Then I go ahead and I twist this one around nice and neat okay that way to the clockwise and then this one counterclockwise now if you notice this wire is now shorter than the others remember i said i do them kind of tight here's why now if i pull on them to make them the same length i have a nice tight wrap and i have room to work okay I'm turning on my soldering iron here, which I should have already done. But at any rate, we will fill in the time with some words from our sponsors. Just kidding. Okay. See how nice and straight and professional it is. Damn, I do a good job. Anywho, there you go. See? And then after I solder this, of course, I'm going to move my heat shrink up over it like so and heat shrink it. Now, we're just about ready here. This iron from Ryobi is kind of handy. It's cordless. It heats up right quick, said the man. You know what I'm gonna do while that's working? I'm gonna go ahead and strip the other wire and prepare it, why not? So we're gonna take about a half inch off of that puppy there. Off we go. And we're gonna take Oh, it's green. Let's go ahead and take care of this. One step at a time. I get my solder. I get my gun. I move all this out of the way. And I go ahead and I put a little bit of solder on there just to kind of make continuity and good contact. Now, you heat, this, heat your work, not the solder. little dabble do you there we go oh that was a little bit dirty there i don't like that get that nice and heated up there looks good to me okay we're gonna turn that off now we're going to go ahead see how that heat shrinks shrunk just a little bit i want to go ahead and put that over there like that Look, this is a Ryobi commercial. Grab my Ryobi portable heat gun, which again is very handy. And I'm going to go ahead and... Reminds me of Shrinky Dinks from back in the day. Remember those things? You put them in the oven, you paint them up, and they shrunk. And somehow, you th people thought that was good art for kids. Anyhow. There you go. I got some good heat shrink happening there. And that's how it works. Little glob of solder there. That comes right off. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do the other one now. It's going to be the same process. I'm going to strip the other side like so. Oh, before I do that, I want to put my heat shrink on because it's easier to put it on before you strip the wires. Okay, as I was saying, I hit the same slot there, there we go. Okay, so again, the Steve method, I fan these out and I mesh these together, nice and straight. Whoop. Let's try this again. There, those other wires were fighting me. We're gonna go ahead and mesh these together. And then we're gonna do 
the old spinning around this way. Okay, in the interest of time, I went ahead and got that one put together. If I can find my solder, I would be a happy camper. Here it is. Okay. Since I don't yet know how to do that fast forwarding thing like they do on videos, you know, this is a big step for me for up from my, from my, uh, using my iPhone and trying to work one handed as you all are aware. All right, get that really good. I didn't like that very much. All righty, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and again, he shrink this over. And then we're gonna button this up and you'll see what I mean by that. Okay, my handy dandy Ryobi. Ryobi should pay me for these advertisements. At any rate, here we go. Heat shrinking that up really, really nice. Now, you recall me saying I had two pieces of heat shrink. I'll show you why I did that. Remember, you gotta put these on first, otherwise you gotta cut all these and redo them because you forgot to put the heat shrink on first. Ask me how I know. Alrighty, so we're gonna put him right about there, okay? And then the second piece here will overlap and I'll show you. Pointing downward. I wanna pause here for a moment. Okay, there we are, fully spliced in throttle. By the way, if any of you don't like the orientation of this, it's either loose or maybe this is down too far or up too far, now you know how you can adjust this by loosening that set screw and then turning it to where you like it, then tightening it. Let's see how we did. Before I do, I always forget to mention this. It is very important that all of you look down below where it says subscribe and hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to my channel. Also hit the little bell icon next to it. Why? Because if I put up a new video, you will be notified, hey, Steve put up a new video. It may or may not be relevant to you, but now you don't have to keep going back and checking to see, I wonder if there's anything new there. Anyway, hit subscribe, hit the bell. Now, let's see how it worked. Do we have drive? Okay, we had drive, yes we do, forward. Do we have reverse, which we didn't have? Why, yes we do, awesome. All right guys, till next time, take care, happy trails, 5starscooter.com. God bless.